then go into the side viewport and select this ring, the ring, that uh, seems cool. Do you believe that's the correct one? Yes. Make sure your seam is in the right place. And scale in and scale out. Which means now we get to go back to the fun stuff, the real fun parts. <coughs> oh no, we've got some more boring stuff to do first. Let's unwrap the trigger now. Uh, the two sides here, the, the, like the, the, the planar sides, this side and this side, they're basically the same, so I'm just going to leave those overlapping, basically. I mean, stuff like the, the trigger and like small details like this, you don't need to spend a lot of time on making them look just right and get UVs just right and make sure there's no stretching or anything, because like, it's not going to... it's not going to matter that much anyway, like, no one's going to notice in the game, so... Like, if you can, the rule I go with is, uh, if it's good enough, then it's good enough. So, like, if you can get away with it and no one's going to notice, then you don't need, or you shouldn't, put any more effort into it than that. Uh, which is not the best of, sort of, rules of thumb, but generally, like, unless it's a portfolio piece or something, then you can get away with quite a lot of stuff, really. Um, that's that finished as well. Uh, if this was like only going to be the diffused textured, like there's no norm map or anything, you'd probably see me um, like welding a lot more stuff together and stitching a lot more things together. But because it has got to be separate, like you have to separate the UV shells when you're using norm maps. So especially with hard surface work like this, like it really does make so much of a difference. So you end up with a lot of like. Uh, you end up with a lot more UV shells, like a lot fewer faces, and it can be a real pain to texture if like you didn't like unwrap it yourself, because you don't know exactly what everything is and like what it means, like which part what is supposed to be what, it can be a real pain. But that's just the price you pay, I'm afraid. That's that done. Although I have a sneaking suspicion that some of the UVs are going to be horribly stretched, like this on this bottom part, because you can see like there's loads of edges close together, so it's pretty obvious the faces haven't been evenly spaced. So because we only unwrapped it on one plane, though, like it's only going, the faces are only on one axis. You can just relax it, although you can't. 
wow, that really should have worked. Why did that not work? I don't know. But anyway... Is this because we have unwelded verts, perhaps? No, it's not. This means we're going to have to go old school on this and go edge to edge. And this end up here is this edge. And we're only moving sideways, so go one axis only. I get the feeling this is going to be a pain. There we go. And then we can scale this part as well. And generally make all of this look more square-ish than it was previously. Which means less texture stretching. Like this part is horribly, horribly stretched. Like that's about where it should be. And that's something that happens occasionally when you use the uh, like the cylinder tool on something that's not really a cylinder. It's like a like a semi-cylinder shape that turns into something else. Like, uh, you can get some pretty dodgy stuff like that going on. But that's just where you need to go in by hand and make sure that everything looks just fine. Now, that edge is right on the edge, so it needs to be over there. This one... Yeah, so they are in the right order, I just need to get the scaling right now. And there we go. That's... Fingers crossed, now finished. I don't see any other major... Major issues with the texture scale, so... Let's call that part done as well. And uh, we're getting on the time a little bit here. I didn't want to take this this long. But uh, I guess, like, it's not too much bad, really, like, the amount of time we've taken for this. Like, I mean, it's oh, 53 minutes so far or something. And this is, like, a whole weapon model. We've done most of it. Just need to pack, really, and finish off. So, this w is going to be a pain to unwrap, I think. But we'll have to see um, what I'm going to do before I even start unwrapping this, actually, is I'm going to go and move this part out of the way so I can get into this middle part to unwrap that easier when I get there. So, like, this part here, uh, we can just best to line plane them out that pretty easily, and that's that done. This part is going to be a pain, because of it's got so many faces on different smoothing groups, and it's all steps, and like, ah, not fun. And it's also not planar, so it's going to have a lot of best aligned stuff on there, which I hate. The plus side, though, is that when we texture this, there's no real unique detail that needs to go into it. <coughs> it's just going to be like one flat material 
so we can probably texture it, uh, unwrap it in some real weird way, as, like if we want to, like as long as there's no texture stretching, and it should be okay. I mean, like this. This is just not, <laughs> not my favorite way of unwrapping something at all. You know, it's like just weird. Like where, where, where even is the seam? I can't even see it. Uh, we can, right. This is another useful trick. Uh, when it's off axis and you need to rotate the gizmo, you know that's not going to rotate at all. So if you come up here and you go from view to local, you can rotate it on the local axis of the the local axis of the object. And um, you can do that with pretty much anything, like faces, edges, and edible poly, like pretty much anything. So it's a lot easier to rotate the seam around because the seam needs to be about there. So that's fine for me. Not the prettiest unwrap in the world, but it gets the job done. Just remember to change back to view afterwards, otherwise you can uh, you think you're gonna be doing one thing and then like rotate tools like, oh no, let's get, let's gonna do this instead. And then it really confuses you for like a whole ten minutes because you're like, wow, why the hell is this doing this? And then you realize and feel really stupid that you forgot to change it back to view and wasted loads of time. Um, yeah, best align is probably not actually the best way of aligning on here. So if we go to, if we align to Y and then like rotate the gizmo around, you know, that's probably going to be a closer to planar thing. Like it's going to be mapped better. And it doesn't really matter that these things are really overlapping because I'm pretty much probably just going to paint over that part of the norm map with the flat color anyway because it needs to be real sharp. It doesn't need to be a soft edge at all. So yeah, it doesn't matter that these massive parts overlapping and crap should be fine. And then we just need to unwrap this part of the inside, which again has been somewhat messily modeled at the bottom. But then that's fine because it didn't need to be. It didn't need to be modeled perfectly anyway because it's been like this thing that's going to stop you seeing it. This little brown thing. So again, I'm going to go into local and uh, rotate the gizmo around to get the seam where I want it. If the seam will even move, there it is. It can be really tricky to spot sometimes. The whole thing. It's quite annoying. But then go back to local afterwards. Always remember that. That can be a real pain. And that's everything. That part I can even delete because that isn't even supposed to be on the model. That's going to be right in the inside of the shotgun, so you can just turn that off. And that's a great way to save some even more triangles. And I probably should move these apart a little bit as well because nobody likes mip mapping issues. That and your. It's going to mess with your padding when you bake as well, which isn't cool. And then we can just stick that there, that part goes there. And we can convert to editable poly. We're almost done because we just need to get rid of all of these parts. Can't even remember why these are still here. And then we need to obviously move this part back to where it was before. And that's that part done, unless it has horrible scaling issues, which I'm really hoping that it doesn't. Yuck. Um, do we need to fix this? Probably not. Yes. Yes, actually, we really should. And why is that? Because we used cylinder.